Peeking out from under the skirt of England is the white chalk petticoat of the South Downs, the Seven Sisters, and one of the beautiful decorations forever sewn into the Sussex landscape is Eastbourne. Hello, my name's Mr. Holliburn, but you can call me Harry. And I'd like to have your company today whilst I revisit some old friends in my hometown. Eastbourne, ah, oh, the Empress of Watering Places, it was conceived by the 7th Duke of Devonshire in the second half of the 19th century and was built as a resort for gentlemen by gentlemen. His edict that no shops were to be built on the seafront still stands today. This perfectly planned Victorian coastal resort grew rapidly helped in part by the arrival of the railways in 1849. Its population at around this time was three and a half thousand. But in just 40 years, it had grown tenfold to almost 35,000. I lived here for 40 years and experienced many of the great changes during that time. These old friends of mine that we're going to meet today are all within a mile of each other on the seafront and we'll be concentrating on just 80 years of their lives, from the 1850s through to the 1930s. We'll start at Eastbourne Pier, past the carpet gardens, stop in at the bandstand, move on to the Lifeboat Museum, then walk up to my old home, the Wish Tower, before we cross the lawns to the Grand Hotel. So let's dip our toes into the inviting waters of the history of Eastbourne, as we walk from the Pleasure Palaces on the pier to the White Palace that is the Grand Hotel. We begin here on Eastbourne Pier. When she was first built, this lady was little more than a glorified walkway stretching out to sea with toll booths at her entrance and a landing stage at her head. But over the years, the buildings and entertainments added have reflected the changing fashions and entertainments of the day. This icon of the seaside resort was built by the famous naval architect and engineer Eugenius Birch and was officially opened by our Lord Edward Cavendish, the youngest son of the 7th Duke of Devonshire, on the 13th of June, 1870. 